It's a privilege to follow you, Mr. Cruz. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Zuckerberg. I, uh, I understand about a month ago you had a meeting in the Oval Office with the President and, and several senators from both parties. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct. Was there a note taker present at that meeting? Uh, Congressman, I don't think that there were note takers at any of these meetings. Okay, so you're not aware that there's any record of what was discussed at that meeting? Congressman, I'm not aware of any formal record. Okay. Did, did you or did the President at that meeting uh, raise or discuss the antitrust investigations that are underway, Department of Justice, Federal Trade Commission, or the various states' Attorney General? Uh, Congressman, I, I, I don't think so, uh, but the meeting was private overall. I'm, I'm, I understand there was no record. I'm asking whether the subject came up. Uh, Congressman, uh, those, those subjects didn't come up, but, but in general, I mean, I'm not, I, I don't feel like it's appropriate for me to comment in too much detail on, on private conversations. Um, we're in a public office. Did anyone discuss the policy change allowing the exemption of political figures and parties from misinformation, that prohibition on Facebook in the course of the meeting? Uh, Congressman, no, that did not come up. I, I want to dive into that in a little bit more detail, not in the context of your meeting. If I understand your testimony here today, you have an aggressive posture against essentially allowing free speech but blocking the speaker. So, for example, if Jenny McCarthy were to post something saying, don't get your kids vaccinated, would you take that down? Uh, Congressman, I think we probably would not take that down, but it's hard for me to comment on a hypothetical without looking at the actual post and, and, the plan, and looking at all the So if someone with a large platform who is spreading misinformation on your platform, you're saying you wouldn't take it down or you would? I thought you had earlier said that you would, it was only politicians you'd limit that speech for. Uh, Congressman, in general, our policy is not to ban people from posting things that are false. It is to, uh, you, you can say something on your page if you want. If an independent fact checker marks it as false, uh, we will put a label on it that says that an independent fact checker has marked it as false, and we will reduce the distribution and spread of it through the network. So let me follow on my colleague, Ms. Tlaib's com comment. You said that you were trying to police and block hate crimes and hate speech. If somebody, po if a member of the American Nazi Party posted horrible anti-Semitic messaging on Facebook, would you block that? Uh, Congressman, our policies against hate speech do lead to us taking down content completely. Misinformation... Okay, that's the, okay, so now let me follow. In the last election, Art Jones ran against Dan Lipinski in Illinois, neighboring district of mine. He was a member of the American Nazi Party. Would he be allowed to speak on your platform in a different fashion than a member of the Nazi Party who was not running for elected office? Uh, Congressman, I'm not familiar with who this person is. I'm, I'm asking the question whether you can spread hate speech if you are an elected official or trying to be an elected official that you would not be allowed to if you were not in that capacity? Uh, Congressman, I think that that depends on a bunch of specifics that I, I, I'm not familiar with this case and, and can't well, the answer to. Um, that's rather shocking. I can follow. Um, I, I don't think that's a hard question, but fair enough. Um, look, it, it, it strikes me. Let me just ask you some totally hypothetical questions. You don't have to answer any of these, and frankly, I don't think you want to answer any of them. Whether or not the First Amendment allows you to scream fire in a crowded theater is an open question that we struggle with all, and what, how you define that. Whether or not a, the Libra is a bank or a credit card or a credit rating system and what regulatory environment it sits under is a hard question. You have the luxury and the privilege not to have to ask those questions and not to have to answer those questions. None of us on this side of the dais have that luxury. We have to figure that out. We have to sort that through. And you're a smart guy. You're a well-meaning guy. I've, I have tremendous admiration for what you've built. But I would remind you of the wisdom of one of our great Supreme Court justices, Louis Brandeis, who said, the greatest danger to liberty, the greatest dangers to liberty lurk in insidious encroachment by men of zeal, well-meaning, but without understanding. Justice Brandeis, of course, also described, one of my colleagues likes to ask everybody if they're a capitalist or a socialist. Justice Brandeis pointed out that when we have tremendous concentrations of power in our country, we only have three choices. We can allow that concentration of power to take over government, which is to embrace fascism. We can allow government to take over that concentration of power, which is to embrace communism. Or we can embrace competition. Your luxury, sir, your privilege, 
comes from the fact that as a country, those of us on this side of the dais have always chosen door three. And I hope you have the wisdom to appreciate that. Thank you. I yield back. The gentleman from Minnesota.